been a big motion picture star for quite a long time. Mm, yeah. Have you made your name in the motion picture business? Yes, love. <laughs> Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that you have done your job in this picture to the best of your ability, James Stewart? I do. What I find fascinating about Jimmy Stewart, first off, here I am calling him Jimmy. People felt so comfortable with him. They felt they knew him, and he ceased to be James, though he was billed that way, and became in people's minds Jimmy, the more familiar. They all say I'm the plotter. I'm a pretty good example of true human frailty. I, I don't really have all the answers, but for some reason, somehow, I make it. Well, I'm a little shy. That's what I like about you. Do you play in serious uh, pictures rather than comedies? Naturally. Sometimes one, sometimes the other. Are you a He-Man hero type? <laughs> Mitchum was a quietly powerful hero on screen. He didn't exercise a lot of the uh, external properties of uh, somebody macho, you know, somebody a brawler or anything like that. But you knew that was all there. It was in him. I came on at a time when, uh, when sort of the ugly leading man, you know, you didn't have to be particularly pretty. And I had a heavy bass baritone voice, so they just uh, manufactured a, a, a heavily masculine image, which was not necessarily true. But uh, I don't know, it becomes a stock and trade, I guess. Till all the folks are dancing cause they're hard to hear. You can see uh, Mitchum and Stewart uh, as uh, complementary, uh, and that, that Stewart is a kind of hero uh, in that way, whereas Mitchum is almost always the anti-hero. So between the two of them, uh, they, they correspond to the opposite ends of the American idea of, of what a hero is. You know, is the hero somebody who has to stand for something, who has to run something, who has to be a leader, or is the hero somebody who was true to himself. Have a donut, hero. The best I can offer. Uh, hero, me? You certainly are. Dad and Robert Mitchum weren't really close friends. They didn't hang out together. Um, I never remember Robert Mitchum coming over to the house, even though my sister and I were in the same class in the same school as Patrine Mitchum, as uh, Mitchum's daughter. We were all friends together. But they just, you know, they lived in different circles. They had different friends and they made one film together, The Big Sleep. So they didn't really cross, but they were certainly colleagues. And in very different ways, they, they portrayed uh, the spirit of America. You mean Stuart? You can meet Robert Mitchum if you'd like to take her. <laughs> America is many things to many people. To a 17-year-old kid, it's the malt shop on the corner. It's freedom to work at the job you like. Freedom of speech and to peaceably assemble. Freedom to own property. The right to vote and to worship God in your own way. It is these freedoms that have made America strong. God bless America. If you read the American Constitution, it's a great document. The men who wrote it had 
great ideas and great political beliefs and it's something that gives you hope that a document like that could be the founding basis of a country and its aspirations and the fact that America was built on this incredible idea of justice for all and equality. Even now, America is still a place where people can make something of themselves and their lives that they can't in other places. That's why people come here. It still is a land of opportunity. Raise your right hands. Repeat after me. I, a citizen of the United States, do solemnly swear. I, a citizen of the United States, do solemnly swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the United States of America. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the United States of America. My father got started in, in movies um, after he had been working in the theater a little bit, and he actually got, sort of got pushed into the theater by his older sister. But he didn't really take it very seriously. It wasn't his burning ambition at all to be an actor. When he first had a family and had to go out and make a living, he got a job at Lockheed Aircraft, which was just you know, during World War II, and he was working in the factory there, um, working with heavy machinery. Um, he also sold shoes for a while, so a kind of an obscure job that he had before he became uh, an actor. His father was killed when he was very young, so he didn't have a father, really, after he was two years old. His father was killed in a terrible railroad accident. So he was raised primarily by his mother and his older sister until, you know, much later when he, um, when his mother remarried and he had a rather nice English stepfather. You, know, you, had, a, you had a sort of restless childhood, didn't you? I mean, you left home when you were, what, 14, wasn't it? Well, at first, I think, when I was six, then when I was 11, then when I was 14, you know, rather seriously, when I was 14. And finally, when I was 16, I went to California. Mm. But why? I mean, you, you dropped out of school. Well, you know, suddenly I'd come home and there wasn't a place for me at the table, so... Time to split, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I got the message, you know, after... <laughs> yeah, they sold your bed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what, what did you do in those days? I mean, were you just sort of hoboing on the road? Mm. Yeah. Knocking at the back door, asking the kind lady if she had a piece of bread, you know. Never offering to mow the lawn, just dealing with the kind lady. <laughs> Randy. Thank you. I, I used to drink this with champagne. So you know Inspector Carson? Our paths cross now and then. No, he recommended you. He said you had that American quality of insubordination. Uh, what do you know of me? Well, you're very rich. Your wife died several years ago and you moved to England. You have two daughters, very pretty, but a trifle wild. My father came from a very small town in Indiana, Pennsylvania. It's very small, but it was much smaller when Dad was born. Dad actually was very quiet about his past. Dad was very quiet anyway but he was quiet about his past. Dad had a very stable childhood. His father was a pillar of the community. He was a volunteer fireman. He fought in two wars, in World War I and the Spanish-American War. He was a very um, strict Scottish Presbyterian. Dad was always interested in acting from an early age, so he was in drama club in high school, and then at Princeton, he was in the Triangle Club, which is a performer's club, and then after he graduated in architecture. When I came back and announced that I wasn't going to go to graduate school and learn to be an architect, uh, I was going to Broadway and have a small part in a play, but bless their hearts, both my mother and my father said, okay. My, my father's brother had sort of the final say. Uh, uh, he said, well, I think this is fine. I said, uh, there haven't been any storts in the uh, 
show business except one, a third cousin of yours, Ezra, and he uh, ran away and joined the circus. And uh, he's the only Stuart that I know of that's ever been to jail, but good luck to you. <laughs>